Hey, good afternoon everybody and welcome back to the channel. I'm gonna head into the shop here in a second. Show you what I'm working on today. Have a pretty exciting little project that we're prepping, getting ready to install. Got a beautiful day going on today. Kind of gray up there. Still pumping in the solar though. Yeah, let's get into the shop. Take a peek at what we're talking about today. So I'm pretty excited about building this new system. This is going to be another 12 volt system. And really excited to introduce uh, the Phoenix Pure Sine Wave Inverter from Victron Energy. This is a 12 volt, 375 watt inverter and we're going to have it also tied in with the smart solar charge controller from Victron, the 7515. And I think I've got everything laid out here that I'm going to possibly need to do this. And the storage will be the Red Odo 12.8 volt, 200 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. And <clears throat> I'm trying to tie this into a very small space. So I'm, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pre-cut all of my wires and hook it up initially here out in the shop before I move it into where it's going to go. I've got all the wire that I'm gonna need. I've got some six gauge back there, six aug, and the rest is 10. And that's all I'm gonna need to tie this system together. The other consideration I'm thinking about is I'm going to put this in a very small footprint. So I'm going to go about, uh, I want it to fit within two feet, which is right there, which I can easily do that. And then basically all of these other components will fit kind of up in here uh, where my logo is right there. So yeah, I'm really excited about this uh, Phoenix inverter. It has an eco mode on it to where when it's not being used in the stand and then it's in the standby mode, it should draw less than one watt of power. So that'll give me the ability to leave this system on all the time uh, without really touching the battery whatsoever. So really excited about that. And I wanna kind of run it on this system because if it does uh, do that, like it says, and I've talked to a few of you that have said that sometimes you've had trouble uh, in the eco mode of getting it to recognize, uh, you know, when to power up, uh, depending on what you're running. So this is going to be a little bit of an experiment because if it does, for the uh, application I'm going to put it into right now, if it does just go down to that eco mode and hang out there at like one watt or less while it's on, then I'm going to probably move this to use it to run the refrigerator because the refrigerator that I'm running never draws more than 200 watts. And in fact, it only draws 200 watts uh, when it's in the defrost mode. So if I could get this tied into the refrigerator system and then all of the times in between cycling uh, on and off, it just drops down to one watt as opposed to closer to one amp. Uh, in the course of a week or a month, that's going to save a ton of power on the refrigerator system. So I'm going to give it a whirl in this other uh, room. I've kind of got the house built into three zones now. So this, this will be another zone of the house that will be independent. And it'll be a good, good place to uh, give this Phoenix a test run. So right now I'm going <clears> to <throat> pre-cut all my wires. I know exactly what I want to do. I've got this solar isolator switch right here. I've got uh, a 10 aug wire coming in from 200 watts of solar and I just need 10 to go from there to the charge controller as well. And then I'm going to put a little fuse here, 50 amp fuse between the inverter and the battery. So it's going to be a very, very simple build, but what I like to do is lay it out here, get all my stuff pre-cut before I crawl into kind of that rather uh, small cramped quarters where this is going to go to, so everything's already pre-cut, and it'll be a very, very quick install. 
And I did mean to say uh, I'm going to use a 50 amp uh, breaker as opposed to, I said, fuse. So that's going to come on later. So the first thing that I'm doing, because I know I've got plenty of uh, cable coming in from the solar panels to work with, I'm just going to build my the footprint for how this is going to go up onto the, uh, the wall. So I've got a lot of extra cable here. Uh, and I want to make it just as short as of a run, as short of a run as I possibly can. And I want to give it a little bit of space between the charge controller and the isolator switch because the charge controller does uh, have the ability to heat up while it's charging a little bit. So I want to give it some space to dissipate that, all of that heat off of that. You know, it's got, you know, metal back there that radiates when it gets hot, even the, the top of these, you know, the case does get pretty hot when they're really cranking. So I want to give it some space and, you know, I want to give it about that much space just so the the heat never interferes with anything else around it. And that should be good. So now I'm just going to cut these wires to fit at about this space because I know when I put this up on the wall and this up on the wall, I just, I just want some nice short runs and, and these Cables that are hooked up to it now are about 18 inches, and there's no reason for me to use that much wire. So I'm going to snip it in there. And the other thing that I will do, I've got some ferrules, which make a nice, clean connection, as opposed to just putting the copper strands in there. I've done both. I've never really had a problem doing it this way, but I will put some ferrules in before I mount it permanently. And I'll show you probably on the permanent installation, what that looks like. But for right now, I just want to get all my wire sizing um, and lengths cut to specifications for the project. Okay, that was super easy and super quick. I ended up cutting about six inches off of uh, what we had here. So I've got, oh, probably approximately 10 or inches or so to work with. This is about how I want it to look on the wall. So that's just right. I don't mind having this much wire. It gives me a little flexibility in exactly where I will mount it. But that's about the distance I want. And that looks pretty good. So the other thing I wanted to show you was, yeah, I'm going to put some ferrules in there. Uh, this particular size charge controller does not accept anything that I've got for putting a ferrule on 10, 10 gauge wire there. It's just they're too big and they won't fit in those little holes. I've always had that problem with this size charge controller, but it works fine just putting the, the, the copper wire in there. It cinches down nice and tight. So that's about roughly what I wanted it to look like. Um, I did put just some foam over the battery terminals, even though they have a cap on them, just in case I slip. I don't want to make any kind of contact with those things while I'm doing this layout. So anyway, I know that that's about how I'm going to want it on the wall. I got a little flexibility to move this around. If I wanted to put it like over here and then tie those solar uh, panel cables into there, but just enough flexibility in that length to work with the installation. So now I'm going to do the same thing with, with this very uh, long, <laughs> it's over two feet here. And I'm going to cut that and we're going to go on the battery side of the charge controller uh, for the terminal connections. So I'm going to cut those real quick. Okay, I've got the battery cables hooked up and as you can see the blue light flashing on the charge controller. I did just hook it up to the battery just to make sure that everything looks good and is working okay. Of course, there's no solar coming in at this point, so I have the switch shut off. And one of the things that you wanna remember is when you do power up your uh, Victron or any charge controller for that matter, you want to uh, connect the battery side first. When you know that's all working right, then you can go ahead and flip your solar panels on, but you wanna make sure that it gets energized first with the battery. And then if I just drop down to the uh, Victron app, as you can see, there's uh, zero watts coming in for that charge controller. And it's sitting there at a resting voltage 
of 13.42. This battery hasn't been used for a while, been sitting on the shelf, but it's gonna go back into production now. So yeah, so it's looking good. And you can see I still have it named Outdoor Charging Station from in previous videos, that particular charge controller. So good, so now the last thing I wanna do is I want to uh, tie in that inverter. And the other thing I wanted to mention is like all of these uh, pieces of copper that I've cut off, you know, I save every little bit because you know, these can be used for shorter runs. When I cut off this, you know, what did I took off 15 inches or so of these longer runs. And now what I've done is before I hook this up, I did kind of lean it up against the wall and see that everything's going to fall into place. So now I know I've got all my wires cut. I cut the positive a little bit longer just because when it's mounted, it'll be a little bit longer run to the positive side. But that's about what I wanted. So pretty short runs and it'll give me plenty of, you know, room to mount everything uh, back in the tight corner that this is going to go to. But this is how I always do a system as I kind of lay it out, get everything cut before uh, I assemble it all together. So this is just the, the pre-assembly. And then what I'll do is I'll just uh, disconnect everything, haul everything back to where this is going to go, and, and I know everything's already cut to fit. So now I've got the, the Phoenix laid out here, and I'm going to take a look at the back side of it here and you can see the the negative and positive positive connection points it's got the ability to for the ve direct uh, dongle to be tied in there which we are going to do it's not quite here yet uh, that'll be in an upcoming video because a lot of you told me that that dongle is really a nice thing to add to these products so um, it's on the way and i will show you I'm going to get this system installed and then I'll install the dongle at a later point. And then you can see there's the on mode off and then the eco mode and then the power and alarm and a ground. So, and that green one is for uh, remote monitoring, it says. So now I'm going to go ahead and cut the, uh, that six gauge wire to fit here and take this to the battery with that uh, 50 amp breaker in between the positive run. Okay, this went together real well. Uh, right here, they take a real nice bite onto the copper, a little over half an inch, so you can get a real nice snug fit in there and plenty of good uh, bite on those strands. And I've already got my shrink wrap slid up in there. So when I disconnect this, I can go ahead and tidy that up with my shrink wrap. Got it on the same thing. I did cut the positive and put that 50 amp breaker like I said I wanted in there. And we've got that tied up. There is enough room on these M8 terminals to stack up a couple of leads. I've got the uh, charge controller coming in here and the inverter so that's real nice so and I did measure everything and gave myself plenty of room so I know like this is going to be mounted up in here and I've got enough that when I get it into its permanent installation point I've got enough of everything but this is up and running we can see the charge controller is on I showed you the app a minute ago Gave us the battery uh, voltage. And the last thing I would do is just tie in these solar panels here and then flip it on. But I'll wait till I move this into the position it's going to be permanently. And everything went together just perfectly. I've got it turned on, as you can see. And I kid you not, as I was hooking it up, the Victron dongle. Let me turn it the right way. This is the uh, Bluetooth dongle, which ties in right there, just snaps in, 
gives you some Bluetooth information on your inverter. And everything's working just as it should. So the green light power is on and I'm actually charging a laptop right now and we can look at the uh, dongle, the information it gives you. And I have just only looked at this for a minute, so there's probably a lot more I can do with this. But right now, charging this laptop, everything's doing fine under normal load. AC output, 120 volts. It's inverting 13.23 volts. So, like I said, I just this minute, uh, while I was finishing up this uh, prepping for its permanent installation, uh, the dongle arrived. And I just couldn't wait to plug that in before I fired it all up. So everything looks good. I'll now disconnect everything. Uh, I know it's going to fit in the space that it's designed for. And all of these uh, amounts of wire will be able to lay everything up there flat, secure it to the, the back of the wall where it will be. These will actually be a little bit more over in this kind of a position. And then the inverter will be more up right in here. And I've got it all pre-cut, pre-tested for its new position. So looking forward to tying that in. It was very easy. Probably took me oh, a good solid hour and 20 minutes to be precise and cut everything to, to fit. So that's what I like to do. I like to go ahead and, and cut my wires before the installation give it a little test run here in the shop and now I'll disconnect everything move it in there and I will show you guys what I end up tying up into this and uh, more information on this Bluetooth dongle which I'm excited to have there too so yeah that's how I did it pretty simple I think I've got everything I need should be just a fine little unit for what I'm thinking about. And like I said, I'm thinking I may end up making that the refrigerator inverter, uh, especially with that uh, eco mode. Yeah, this is all I know about the dongle right now. It says everything's operating normal. I'm guessing that on further investigation, I'll get a load percentage. Uh, in there, but like I said, I just now plugged this baby in, so I'll figure the dongle out be, before I uh, talk too much more about it, because it's a brand new thing. But a lot of you guys said these units work well with the dongle, so I've got the dongle now. I will explore the dongle. <laughs> so that's it. That's my little uh, prepping for a permanent installation was just to get all those wires cut. It's going to make a nice little system. I already have the solar panels out there in place and the wires right up to where they're going to uh, feed into this unit. So nothing left to do but disconnect everything here, move it all into its permanent uh, position, and then reconnect it. And it should go really quick for that. So uh, I will show you what it looks like in a, in a future video. Pretty easy. Yeah, I think that's all I can think to say about what I did here. Yeah. Yeah, I can't wait to see it in operation. I will say that there's absolutely no noise coming out of this thing whatsoever. And it is charging, so... Yeah, we will explore further. I like that little system already. Alrighty. Hey, thanks as always for tuning in, everybody. Can't wait to show you what that little system looks like up and running, but I just wanted to show you what my prep looks for before I ever uh, build a system. I like to lay it out, and that one's small enough I could just lay it on a tabletop and get it all configured, so that's how I like to do it. So when I get ready to tie that up in the next couple of days, it'll go together as it should. All right, catch you on the next one. Aloha.